with Prime Minister Gordon Brown of United Kingdom and Prime Minister Melissa Zenawi of Ethiopia, I am pleased to announce today to launch a new high-level high advisory group on climate change financing. Its, its mission is to mobilize the financial resources for climate change pledged at the recent United Nations Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen. Prime Minister Meles and Prime Minister Brown will co-chair the group. Other members will include heads of state and government and high-level officials from the ministries and central banks, as well as experts on public finance, development, and related issues who will serve in their nation, uh, personal capacities. And there will be an even balance between developing and developed countries, and I will soon make it available, a full list of the panel members. The advisory group <coughs> will develop a practical proposals to significantly scale up uh, both short-term and long-term <coughs> financing for mitigation adaptation strategies in developing countries. In particular, it will look at how to jumpstart the mobilization of new and innovative uh, resources to reach our $100 billion annually by 2020. Uh, funding would include both public and private sources. These resources <coughs> would support adaptation, mitigation, and technology uh, development and transfer and capacity building in developing countries with priority for the most vulnerable uh, countries. I expect the advisory group to prepare early outputs by the May or June uh, meetings of the UN uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC. Final recommendations uh, would be issued before the next conference of the parties in Mexico in December. I will ensure that results of the group's work are communicated to the UNFCCC conference of parties with the full expectation that the advisory group's work will help build momentum towards a successful negotiation of a comprehensive climate change agreement. In closing, let me emphasize the importance of rapid action. It is particularly important to release money for immediate adaptation and mitigation efforts in developing countries, especially for the most vulnerable. Uh, developing countries need to move as quickly as possible toward the future of low emission growth and prosperity. Millions of people in Africa and around the globe are suffering from the effects of climate change. Providing resources for adaptation is a moral imperative. It is also a smart investment in a safer, a more sustainable world for all. Thank you very much again, to Prime Minister Gordon Brown and Prime Minister Meles Zenawi for your willingness to serve as co-chairs of this very important high-level advisory group on climate change financing and your leadership and your commitment in addressing one of the most critical challenges facing our world today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Finance for adaptation and mitigation and transfer of technology are of central significance for developing countries in general and the poor and vulnerable countries in particular. This is so because these countries need the financial and technological assistance to be able to adapt to inevitable climate change and to contribute to the mitigation of such change. That is why finance has become a crucial element of the Copenhagen Accord. That is why we have all welcomed the Copenhagen Accord in general and its provisions on finance in particular. While the provisions on finance of the Copenhagen Accord are below the hopes and expectations of many people in the developing world, they have nevertheless been welcomed by most of our leaders as exemplified by the endorsement of the accord by the recently concluded summit of the African Union. 
but even those who have welcomed the accord and its provisions on finance have nevertheless expressed a high degree of skepticism about the practicality of these provisions. Such deeply felt skepticism is perhaps understandable given the many promises of financial assistance to the developed world that have not been kept. This time around, promises made have to be kept because the alternative is irresponsible management of the climate followed by catastrophic changes. I'm convinced that the advisory group can play a vital role in coming up with practical ideas for the implementation of the provisions on finance of the Copenhagen Accord. I'm optimistic that the work of the advisory group will make it possible for the developing world to join the developed world in Mexico for a final and binding treaty on climate change with the confidence that promises made on finance will be kept. Uh, we will be assembling the best experts from every part of the world to address one of the world's greatest causes, preventing catastrophic climate change. Despite the disappointments uh, of not reaching a final agreement at Copenhagen, 92 countries have communicated support for the Copenhagen Agreement. 66 countries have set out their plans for climate change or their targets covering over 80% of global emissions. Already we can see that if promises are met, the accord will lead to the peaking of global emissions by or before 2020 and make it possible for us to hold to a trajectory of global temperature increases to two degrees Celsius. But we must take forward now some of the elements of the agreement. We must get the approaching $30 billion figure for fast start finance for 2010 to 12 flowing now to help developing countries immediately tackle and adapt to climate change, tackle deforestation and move towards lower carbon growth paths. We must put in place the transparency for measurement, reporting and verification and we must take forward the cooperation on technology. And we must deepen international agreement through a detailed set of rules and governance arrangements under the United Nations to be finalized in Cancun later this year. And our end goal is still and remains a legally binding outcome. The high level advisory group will take forward a crucial task. The commitment in our accord to 100 billion in annual finance flows from 2020 to developing countries is one of its central elements. Fast start finance is vital, but it will need to rise significantly after then, including funding additional to existing official development assistance. This cannot all be done from taxpayer revenues, so we must examine new sources of finance both public and private. This is the task of the advisory group. I very much look forward to working with Prime Minister Mellies, with the members of the advisory group in the task which I believe is one of the most important we face, combating climate change by ensuring that the poorest countries have the finance that is necessary to do so. If we can resolve this problem, then I believe many of the other challenges of climate change can also be resolved. So the task before us, while daunting, is a very important one to the future of the environment of the world.